The following is an interview with Justice. Justice runs a company called Decolonial Startführung. Yeah, we do um, city tours, or walking tours through the African quarter, and that's kind of we um, the yeah the perspective we take um, to talk about the colonial history of um, Germany. We spoke to Justice about a lot of topics around diversity, diversity in the world of startups, um, why there's resistance to the conversations that we might have around that. Um, why there are so many white people investing in companies, um, why she thinks that there's change needed. And she really kind of like um, throws back the curtain on a lot of topics that might not be obvious to people um, who kind of aren't in this world and looking for fundraising as a black person um, and really, yeah, kind of sheds a lot of light on these topics, which is super interesting for me. I, I think uh, I got a lot out of it and, and um, definitely... Um, explained areas of the the world of business that I didn't really know existed, which is very cool. We're also joined today by Rahaf. I'm Rahaf Abul Hassan. I am a, an occasional podcaster <laughs> and a web developer. And today I'm jumping in for Dan. But I'm very glad to have this opportunity because uh, I like what Justice and Decoloniale Führung is doing in Berlin and I would love to hear more about it too. Um, the podcast is brought to you as always by Codesphere. You can sign up for Codesphere at the old URL, codesphere.com. And uh, you can download the podcast wherever you get good podcasts. So. Yeah, just uh, just browse and find it. Um, and on YouTube as well, actually. So if you're a YouTuber, you can watch it there. Uh, enjoy the show. That's it. Um, so you said you started in March. Um, was that... Uh, is it kind of like a... Um, all post covid or did you have the idea before or like tell us a little bit about your journey to kind of beginning the beginning the, the, the company or founding the company um so it was already um on my agenda a few years ago actually also like um um f- so when I when I basically came to the uh, to 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 Berlin like about seven years ago, mm. I, I went to that quarter um, and I thinking that I'm gonna find a lot of African uh, restaurants and Afro shops and stuff. And then I was quite shocked when I arrived there and um, people were looking at me maybe not that friendly. Um, and then I was just like. Uh, we are really curious about the the history. Like, why is it called African Quarter when there are no Africans living there? Right. <laughs> Good question. No, no uh, African culture or anything to find. Um, yeah, and then. I participated in two tours um, over the years, but they never really talked about the history of those street names, right? It was more about colonial history um, uh, in general, but they didn't like really um, explain like what the, the, the street names meant. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did uh, a lot of research on my own. And then um, at one point I, I, f- I felt like, okay, I understood kind of um, the, the meaning and also the history um, of those different street names. Um, and then I felt like actually people should know about that. <laughs> right? yeah. and, and, and then I tried to approach um different associations um who already do this kind of work and i was like yeah um i can kind of help to uh, make it more accessible because i I felt like it's quite complicated to book a tour um and then but then yeah of course i also wanted to only work with black um tour guides right and um um because i felt like it's important for um people to see that um, as Africans, we kind of also own the story, right? Mm. And 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 um, so this was a bit more complicated, and I didn't feel like um, the the associations that I approached around, I think two or three years ago, um, were really uh, motivated to 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 do it. And then um, in the meantime. Um, yeah, there was COVID and I founded actually a travel agency. And then um, after that, 
I, I, I felt like, um, I don't know. I just kept coming back to that, uh, to that, uh, idea. And then, um, I, I tested it quite a, a, a few times last year in, um, uh, October. So I did like, I think like six private tours for, um, associations. Um, and then, uh, they were so like, um, inspired and motivated and they were like inc really encouraging me. Uh, so I was like, you know, um, let me try because actually, um, the first reactions were really positive also. And, 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 and they asked like, okay, like, um, how often do you do it? And, blah, blah, blah. and so then, um, yeah, I went traveling and then at, during that time I kind of prepared everything. And in March I, uh, started then to do it kind of, um, regularly. Nice. So there was kind of a really uh, good long period of brewing it up before you kind of jumped yes, in. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's really cool. And especially because it's so mission based, I think that, uh, you know, giving yourself the time to sort of digest it and, and kind of put the product when you go and eventually put the product out there or the tour itself, I think that it's just, it means that it's kind of very well structured. Um, did you learn a lot from kind of, I guess in the, in the digital world, it would be called like prototyping, <laughs> but did you get, did you learn a lot from doing those first kind of couple of test tours or is there anything that you kind of, any recommendations of the reasons why you should test first to, to listeners out there before you just jump in with both feet? Yeah, I was, um, I mean, first it was really about the, the like for me to understand, to see the reactions of the people, like how are they open about it? Are they like interested in, do they feel like it's something they would recommend? Right. And they yeah. did, right. Like one of the uh, ladies, she came kind of back, she was first a participant and then she came back with her association or the, the group that she's working with. And uh, she was like, uh, yeah, I felt like. Um, they also should do it. And um, that was really, I think, um, nice to see. And then also, yeah, they gave, of course, like um, uh, the recommendations about like um, uh, pictures or something that I can um, also show during the tour. So, and then like what, what really like stuck to me was the fact that um, like they had conversations based like discussions, you know, it was kind of an, uh, the base for, um, or spark for, for discussions and for them to think further and like, Hey, um, I've came across this. What do, do you think this means something or la, la, la. you know? So it was really like, it, I, I felt like people, um, were kind of, um, it wasn't something like that just went in and out, but it stuck with them mm. and they uh, kind of made them uh, really digest and um, kind of think about it. And um, that was something that I felt like, okay, actually I want, I want to um, uh, achieve that, that more people um, are inspired to um, at least like uh, think about the colonial past. Yeah. Maybe. And um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I think that that whole kind of topic around, um, uh, especially when you start a company, there's like a small group of, again, to use the tech word, super users, like people who are so into it. Um, there's a story that I've mentioned a few times on this podcast, the guy that founded Pinterest. Apparently that was his like whole, that was his secret. He was like, he'd just go to coffee shops in San Francisco and get people who were like, oh my God, this solves this huge problem of my life and I can just... Uh, he was just showing people as many as many people as he could the the app, and then and then as you say, it's like the it kind of sparks off this this kind of discussion around it. Um, so yeah, super cool that you found that those people in the first few trials are doing it. That sounds like is that kind of repeated since you've done the tours more um, regularly? As as it kind of has the community grown? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel um, that it's every week kind of like i mean that's the most reward rewarding part yeah definitely that's the most rewarding part actually like sometimes of course you you feel tired or whatever but then you do the tour and then people are so grateful as well too like um um and it's yeah inspired they, 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 they like the feedback the immediate feedback that i get um always like um yeah keeps me going to be honest yeah nice um um, and you, and, and you do develop, develop a community around it as well. Do people kind of like join a Facebook group or like a, um, like chat channels and stuff after, after they've done the tour or is it, um, uh, is it a bit more organic than that? 
It's uh, a bit more organic, I would say. Of course, I have um, I have an Instagram page. Yeah. I haven't started a Facebook group yet. Um, yeah, let's see. I mean, that's definitely something to uh, think about, uh, elaborate. Um, yeah, at the moment, it's more like um, either they follow on Instagram because as well on Instagram, I most of the times uh, post also recommendations that I get from the tour. Like if people say, oh, I've been to this museum or I've read this book and, uh, you know, then I, I next to the group picture, I also uh, post that like so that the Instagram pro, uh, account also becomes something like an archive, you cool. know, so when people are um, uh, yeah, interested to learn more, they know exactly where to go and where to kind of find um, good books, movies or do- documentaries and stuff. Yeah. Nice. Uh, no, I have like two more uh, freelance tour guides who do it. Um, and one is um, uh, of Ghanaian heritage, so he um, likes to do the English tours. Um, and then uh, one also, um, yeah, Afro-German uh, lady who does who helps me out with the um, German tours as well. Um, yeah, but of course they both work full time, so um, they most of the time uh they're on the uh, weekends and yeah the private tours um they're mainly done from uh, by me because they are also the bookings are most of the times uh, from german uh yeah institutions or you when you said you first kind of approached different associations with the idea uh they were a little bit hesitant or uh didn't quite understand it is it now it's like got now it's like moving to, is the is the reception better? Are they kind of like more involved or uh, are they still, is it still still the same vibe? I don't know. Like the, the thing is the association that um, uh, I mean, the approach, they were also, I think they like, like I assume they don't have a, a, a problem with me doing it. Um, but also the fact that I was really like kind of, I only want black tour guides. Like, do you have like, uh, black tour guides who would be interested in doing that and I mean the most of the times the uh, board of those associations were kind of white mm. so um, I don't know maybe this was something they just didn't uh, feel comfortable with I don't know really because um, it was more um, that at some point I didn't get hold of them anymore so um, I don't know um what 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 it was that kind of put, it, put them off but also they maybe they were like um it's not their focus or i really don't know yeah um um but i felt like also with associations it's like structural wise it's a bit more complicated right you have always to have like uh the people with all the people of the board like kind of agreeing to it uh whereas as a company um kind of yeah i can i can take just decisions today and start yeah. this you know the, the same day to do what i feel like or you can disrupt <laughs> yeah. yeah nice yeah you know, yeah it's a kind of shorter process so that's why it's also kind of easier so i'm actually okay or like maybe even happy that it didn't work out um because i'm much more flexible and less dependent on on any uh, yeah, processes or other people. Yeah, yeah. I think that's um, a lot of people we've spoke to so on the podcast have said that where they've maybe approached um, the reason why they've started their company in the first place is because they've approached like an authority or um, you know like a, a power that be that a power that is, <laughs> um, and then they've uh, and then they've re- realized that it's just too much of a slow moving ship to then either integrate with or. Um, you know, just kind of be just to sort of start the, the process there because you know I think with a startup or like a, a small company you've got to you've got to move really fast to make it work. Um, but then it, it shows you a lot of opportunity as well. I think, which is really cool. I, I mean, I'm I'm glad that people can start their own companies to make things move on move f- further. But I think this uh, associations uh, situation also need to be somehow addressed and it should change. You know, like the um, the solution for a problem is not running, like not ignoring it and just finding another one. They should, we, 
we should start or not we, but something should need to be happening so that uh, no walls or no doors will be closed for people like Justice because at some point she didn't hear from them anymore. And that's, I don't know. I think that's a problem that we are facing and we need the, the, the solution will not be just to move on and let only people who have, have access to those boards and associations and fund uh, funding uh, budgets uh, to have access to them. And then we, we get um, satisfied with the rest, mm. but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that Justice was able to find a solution and <laughs> come, come with this great idea. Nice. But I wanted to ask if it, if it also gets hard for you sometimes. Like, I know that it's good and that it, it's fun when the, you, when, you're, when the people in front of you are giving you a good feedback and a positive feedback, but the topic is still, I don't know, like, lastic, you know, as they say in German. It's a heavy... Um, topics do you do you ever feel like you cannot do this anymore or you need a break or it's getting hard yeah the thing is like um for me I, it's like um it's hard either way right like either i i do the tours and um it kind of sparks a little bit of hope in me that um, um, the people maybe change their perspectives or like start at least um, a- approaching things from it like differently, right? And also like um, at least because in those tours, I also es- explain like the invention of racism, right? Like why it was invented and why uh, like what kind of function it has and um i and 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 i think that's really important especially with the with the german uh white german uh crowd as well right because we don't talk about racism um really and and the people most of the people think that uh racists are people who are treating um other people like bad like intentionally bad right or um and 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 that's not that i mean that's a like a symptom maybe of racism but that's not racist we are all like uh, um socialized uh, um as racist so and i think like that's i just want to get it out there that people know that actually we are all racist and unless we do something about it um we're not going to get out of that uh, cycle. And if that's the only thing that they take home, I'm already happy. So, and, 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 and if I don't do it, I feel like um, those um, racist um, encounters or like situations that also happen every now and then, um, they're never going to end. Right. So it's, um, and that's hard to, that's also like, and, and then, so if I can choose my heart, I'm going to choose the heart where I feel like I can, I'm actually um, doing something that may, or like there's a small possibility that it may help change the, the, the future a little bit. So yeah, that's, yeah, kind of my motivation. Nice. Yeah. Good. That's a good, pretty good motivation. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really also I don't know it's it's really kind of you to take it on yourself to help people gain some awareness or learn something like the words you say I think people need to know this I know <laughs> I know what you mean and um, I think it takes a lot of guts and uh, courage to do this again and again and again and again even though it's your own history and uh, your own pain uh, that you also reflect and try to make people aware of. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like, but I feel like also maybe due to the, to the Black Lives Matter movement um, and um, I think like also 
uh, people addressing ra racism more and more. Like you can't uh, live in this country anymore and say racism doesn't exist, right? There mm -hmm. have been so many discussions uh, and so many like complaints uh, publicly um, where um, people like like people had to admit, okay, we have a problem. So. Um, this also makes it easier because now we are at the point where um, it's not a discussion whether or not racism exists. It's a discussion like what kind of is like, how is it still like um, part of our of us, our daily life, our systems, our institutions and uh, for people. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give them the opportunity to actually understand what the problem is mm -hmm. because a lot of people, I feel like they, especially when they don't have like black friends and there are a lot of uh, people who don't uh, have like, um, yeah, black people in their surroundings. And, and even when you're like, only because you're a black person doesn't mean you uh, are always uh, able or you sh like have to always like educate the people around you. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this is a way where, I mean, it's an official way where they can um, understand. And also the, the, it's important for people to understand that this kind of educational thing, um, it, it's, it's worth your money. Like mm -hmm. you should pay for it. And, um, and you, like that's the first thing you can do, like to, to actually make a, a, a help us have a more and more inclusive society mm -hmm. um, sometimes i feel like people like expect from black people that we always educate for free and i i think that's not okay um i think it's i think a lot of people think that education should be for free like end of story you know it's but like yeah a, but then <laughs> But not from from individuals, more from exactly. Yeah, then yeah. It's okay. Part of, of the school system, which is something we will also like. Um, definitely, like if I can find a way, I will definitely try to push that that it becomes uh, part of uh, the school system. That people, even like you know, you send your child to Kita, and then like they don't even know what racism is. So they don't even know when or like um, they are kind of treating your, your child unfairly, right? Mm -hmm. And um, like, I feel like everyone should at least have like one, um, I don't know, workshop or seminar or I don't know, lesson um, just talking about racism For sure. as a base. It should be a base kind of, right? Yeah. Um, and and from that point of view, what's your uh, impression of the in, in the world of startups and kind of like the people that you've met in in and the kind of the level of diversity in that world too? I mean, the thing is now, like I think in the last year, especially, I feel like there have been more like uh, like um, communities um, addressing um, yeah um, non-white people and mm. also. Um, catering resources to non-white people um but before that or apart from that it's still very very white and um the uh, especially when you have like topics that are not uh, always relevant especially for the white elite that um has the resources like money right like as an investor or whatever um and they feel like it's not relevant for them they are also not going to invest in it unless they believe in it right so yeah. uh, to find a, a, a person or like i don't know who feels like yeah we need this project we need a startup um and i'm gonna invest with my own money um to make uh, this grow it's quite like uh, tough because um Mm. I mean, especially them, they don't want to talk about colonial history, right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, it's really like, um, also, that's why also I, I, I didn't, um, I didn't start with that, to be honest, I didn't make it dependent. And also, like, my goal is that um, the company stays as uh, self funding and sufficient as possible mm. um uh 
if of course if there are like uh, if I've get an in, uh, investors or like a funding from outside that's fine but whether or not it's not gonna like um, it's not gonna basically stop us from from growing this company absolutely not um, I'm not gonna make it dependent from from that yeah and it the only thing is that maybe it will take more time um, but uh, that's fine. I don't think if you're in this world, you'd never know about it. Or if you had, a, if you didn't have the a peek into the this kind of these these difficulties and issues, which is kind of nuts, because then it means that the people like, for example, you starting your company or you Rahaf starting your podcast, um, it, it, is there's this, there's these levels, these hurdles to jump through, which you don't even know are there if you, unless you're kind of awake to this whole kind of topic. What advice would you give to people who are in your position, um, like who might who might be thinking, "Oh my God, this is like way way harder than it's been portrayed to me." Is like get funding for your startup and make a company. Like, what would be the what would be your advice? Yeah, the first like my advice probably would be like um, uh, exist first, right? Like um, start your company um, like on a very very small scale, whatever it is. But at least then you have already the proof that there's interest in the market and um, you can really like um, like um, try out different things, test different things and then be like convinced about your product based on on, on, on facts, right? Whether it's numbers or like um, interviews or whatever it is. But um, yeah, exist first kind of. And then, um, because there are like a few problems, especially with um, black um, or, or like companies that target the the, uh, the black uh, community, um, one thing is that you don't have any numbers about the market, right? You don't. We don't. There are no like uh, uh, numbers that really like, public numbers from the state that are published that would tell us how big the um exactly the back the black diaspora is or like um people who also um yeah like experts expats mm -hmm. yeah um and then also the the income structure how it it should be raising right because we are the kind of the first uh official um generation that is actually um in a position where we can start building wealth right like our our parents most of our parents they just they came here as um maybe asylum seekers or um uh yeah students or whatever like uh, you know when and went back so for us it's like the first time like we are the first generation who go to kindergarten go to school get our degrees and actually like are uh, kind of part of the working world and now even are uh, able to claim maybe higher positions than juniors and manager position right it's, it's super hard to get in those leading uh positions uh anyways because um um people still don't like to see it and they're not they're not used also to see it they don't believe that black people can actually lead a department and lead like a like you know company and like it's really hard for a lot of like we always have this kind of glass ceiling right yeah. and it's gonna take some time to break through um on a on a larger scale but like and and and, and like so these are all like things that will kind of also um make it hard for you to convince convince investors that you did like especially white investors that you uh, or your company is the right uh, company for them to put their money in and then to trust you with their money and you know like uh, that's kind of already something where you have to be really really convincing and then the fact that you cannot base it on numbers right you cannot say i have done a, a market analysis and i've seen that the black diaspora is getting more uh that the income growth is like this you know uh, over the years and uh, in in a few years you will have a lot of like um wealthy or more wealthy black people like you can't base it on 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 numbers mm. so um, 
the, and, and what do investors want to see? They want to see uh, uh, numbers. Yeah, yeah. So that's also, uh, something that's um, kind of making it hard to um, convince. But like if you have, um, I think that if your your company already exists and it's already like self sustainable, uh, self sufficient, or sustainable, then you may have a, a better chance to do it. Because at the moment, also like for me, I was looking for like black investors in Germany, and like I didn't find it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was going like, to ask about that. You have, yeah, you, maybe you like you may have like single. Um, wealthy or more wealthy uh black people i'm sure there are but they're like in the probably right? only, i don't know <laughs> like the only one that comes to my mind is football player soccer exactly and football players most of them have, have white girlfriends <laughs> oh, <women. laughs> so they are not always like only because you're black you're not always like pro-black right you're not always yeah. like so and and i feel like especially in those the crowds and those elite grou- crowds um it's like uh sometimes maybe as a survival tactic as well it's a bit more um of course you want to be accepted and and then um you try to disassociate as much with your blackness as 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 as, as you can so they're not going <laughs> to invest <laughs> unless you have like them being like on a personal level, like super, like, uh, like, um, proud of their, um, heritage, which of, of course you can also find, but yeah, it's not, it's not, the uh, no. Yeah. That's, su- like- that's such an interesting topic of like, uh, yeah, being being proud of your heritage, or or like kind of like trying to like I don't know. Um, invest in you mean invest in? Yeah, or just just that example as you say from like say taking taking like a one a one demographic of people that from an outside looking in, it's just like oh yeah, sure, there's people out there that you can talk to, and sure there's like the black community that you can you can reach out to, but then yeah, you, you don't realize the other side of the coin, which is they have probably kind of like. I don't know, uh, untied themselves from the community to get where they are. Mm-hmm. And then it shows the the, the level of um, systematic kind of um, probably for want of a better word, racism that there is, that mm-hmm. means that it is harder to, to kind of um, to start these projects and, and do these things, which you wouldn't know if you were just like, ah, you know, I'm just looking at this from a, from a, from a very, very far away point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, super, it's super interesting. Um, so yeah, so just to go back to that point of investment, so the, so you personally haven't come across any uh, any any black people who invest in companies, or it's, is it just like a the rarest the rarest person you can find? Is it just like a sweeping sweeping statement, or or, or does it exist somewhere? Do you think maybe? <laughs> I think like I'm pretty sure it exists somewhere. <laughs> it's just not, you know, like it's not accessible. And um, also, like, how many times do you see in the newspapers uh, uh, um, that um, it's stating or oh, a, a black-owned company uh, is has raised now? Like, you don't even have to say it, but you can put a picture on the founder, for example. It like it like I just found out. Um, uh, um, randomly that the founder of Calendly, right, that we all use mm-hmm. is black, right? And like you, like you don't get across, like you don't receive those information, yeah. you know? And for other companies, you always have like, especially like, like often um, those three white men who have founded a company and then there's a news, like a, an article about them, you know? And um like just the awareness about it is not is not yeah. there and then uh, of course this was also i think um he's definitely uh it was a, a non-european so then like if you don't talk about like uh american successful like on a large scale successful black uh, founders or you don't name it or you don't make it like visible um european ones <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like no so um 
yeah, it's like, I'm sure it exists, um, but it's really like, I would really love for them to come forward and be like, also like, I mean, at the moment, I feel like a lot of black people's, the most um, important goal is to save money. Okay. And then like, okay, saving money is one thing, but actually like getting into that space where money works for you, that's a whole different topic. And to understand that you also have to build trust. But then if you don't have anyone in your family who's ever done it, never, you don't have anyone in your circle who's ever done it, then um, you're not gonna like, uh, it's gonna be hard for you to be like, okay, I have like saved up money now. And now I've got to take x amount and i'm gonna invest it in a in a startup it's like i just saved this money like, I <laughs> yeah. my job's done <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna take it and invest in in something i'm not sure about that it's gonna work you know like it's like you have to have this kind of um yeah kind of like uh, this kind of surrounding where it's normal yeah, yeah, yeah. right and i just i only have like the surrounding um and it's like a group of white men who are above 40 and they're like, they have like, they run multiple businesses, but then it's like mm-hmm. normal, you know, and they are all friends with each other, you know, like kind of, um, and, um, like when you talk to them, like one-on-one, they do like, uh, give you a lot of information as well. They share a lot and, um, and stuff, but it's like, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a completely different world. It's also kind of completely different world, uh, way of handling money or like, like for them, it's kind of also fun, you know? Yeah. And, and for, for, for us, it's like, or for me, it's like, I mean, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds scary. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scary. Like, what is if you lose that mo- money? And then he's like, yeah, but I have already like, uh, I have four other businesses where where I've also invested. One of them is going to bring me money. It's fine. Like, you know, like, and you're like, okay, um, if that works for you, it's fine. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, it, yeah. but it's just a huge leap, and I, I think yeah. people are just presume that it's okay. I think, especially in the current climate it's very it's very obvious to see how much gambling is going on and there's some people who are just like ah yeah it doesn't matter fine we can we can lose it but then a lot of people can't lose it <laughs> you yeah. know and i, I think it, it's, exactly. it's it is it is life or death for certain people i think it's uh but and it's and i think it's almost like become a bit of a taboo to say that it isn't it's like oh you know it's business so you've got to like you live by the sword die by the sword kind of thing um, and I think it's, it should be fine just to be like, no, this isn't sustainable. This isn't a good way of doing business. Uh, we can't, we, someone's got to be, someone's got to put their hand up and say, we need to change the way that this, this works. I was actually going to ask you a question, Rahaf, because, uh, you know, obviously you're kind of more living in the tech world. Do you find that finding like, um, diverse mentors or people that you could look up to for advice? Is that, is that a challenge for you or is it something that you, uh, do have? Or do you want uh, either? Like, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm gonna say I have really nice uh, people that I look look up to and mentor me and help me and give me advices, but they are all white males. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, not because I picked them, but because that's actually the truth. But uh, for me, it's but that doesn't mean I, that doesn't mean that. I have the impression so far, because I'm also not so long ago in the tech world, that I have the impression that people want to exclude me or that I will not get a job because I'm a a woman of color. I would say that right now it's maybe getting better and all my experiences so far are positive. But yeah, if I look around me, it is mostly white males. And I think... It uh, not only plays a role that um, they, yeah, like exclusively uh, handled this branch, let's say, but also as as uh, Justice said, mm, we are the first generation. Like in my in my case, maybe the second maximum generation from our homelands or our countries or our societies and communities that get into this field or get into higher education or, 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 
So it could also play a role that we are newcomers. We are coming now into this world and there is so much to learn and we're going to need a lot of support and a lot of guidance. Um, and while Justice was talking, I was just all, I, just ideas were coming to me, actually. Maybe there should be a fund, like an allyship fund, where not only, like, just because minorities are minorities and not so many of them are capable of, I don't know, funding a startup, maybe allies can come and more minorities can become one big majority uh, majority <laughs> they have to be majority but you know yeah yeah uh, just like we are doing it in activism just like we're doing it in um uh, diversity and inclusion work that allies work with each other you know lgbtq plus and migrants and women work all together and feminists to reach a specific goal so like none of us is free until all of us are so to say so that would be a good thing in case. But of course, there's also, um, there's still the problem that most of fundings go to safe bits, let's say. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So but it's interesting is- you say about safe bets, because I, I didn't know before we spoke about this whole um, concept of data, you know, saying that there isn't any, there's not there like hard data uh, around like, um, like you were saying before, justice about like what what you know who you be able to reach or the numbers of people who uh, are in these um, ethnically diverse groups. Um, so it's you start to be able to put a picture together of like why this stuff is happening. But then on the other side, you kind of realise that um, people are being bets are being played all over the place. So why not? Uh, like do the same in 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 diverse uh, community or more diverse communities yeah and is there any other questions you've got Rahaf? how can we book you well, like book the decoloniale stadtführung stadtführung um yeah through the website actually just put in on google decolonial stadtführung and uh the website will pop up and then um yeah you can book the tickets for Saturdays at 11 is in German and then uh, Saturdays and Sundays and then at 2 p.m. it's in English. And yeah, then um, uh, you can come. We meet at U-Bahnhof Afrikanische Straße. Um, yeah, and then we just we just uh, walk for uh, yeah one and a half to two hours maximum so depending on the amount of questions and input that the group also is giving and yeah then um, we have a great time 